In the diary of St. Faustina, called Divine Mercy in My Soul, St. Faustina recounts an episode of trying to encourage trust and hope in one of the sisters of her community, who worried greatly that her repentance, her confessions and penance were not sufficiently pleasing to the Lord, that she was not really set free from her sins. This is what St. Faustina wrote, and it's worthwhile recounting it in its entirety. She writes, One evening an elderly sister revealed the condition of her soul to me. She said that she had already been suffering interior, interiorly for several years, that it seemed to her that all her confessions had been bad, and that she had doubts as to whether the Lord Jesus had forgiven her. I asked her if she had ever told her confessor about this. She answered that she had spoken many times about this to her confessors, and the confessors are always telling me to be at peace, but still I suffer very much and nothing brings me relief, and it constantly seems to me that God has not forgiven me. I answered, You should obey your confessor, sister, and be fully at peace, because this is certainly a temptation. But she entreated me with tears in her eyes to ask Jesus if he had forgiven her and whether her confessions had been good or not. I answered forcefully, Ask him yourself, sister, if you don't believe your confessors. But she clutched my hand and did not want to let me go until I gave her an answer, and she kept asking me to pray for her and to let her know what Jesus would tell me about her. Crying bitterly, she would not let me go and said to me, I know that the Lord Jesus speaks to you, sister. Since she was clutching my hand and I could not wrench myself away, I promised her I would pray for her. In the evening during benediction, I heard these words in my soul. Tell her that her disbelief wounds my heart more than the sins she committed. When I told her this, she began to cry like a child, and great joy entered her soul. I understood that God wanted to console this soul through me. This episode in St. Faustina's diary and these words of Jesus are words that I, as a priest, have made use of many times to help quell the storm in souls who, having turned to the Lord with repentant heart and having received his forgiveness in the sacrament of confession, cannot seem to forgive themselves, cannot seem to believe and trust that the sacrament of reconciliation does exactly what it is intended to do, restore right relationship, friendship with the Lord, wash away our sins, and restore the life of grace in the soul. Tell her, said Jesus, that her disbelief wounds my heart more than the sins she committed. Sometimes when we have sinned, perhaps in really big ways, it can seem almost too easy to just confess our sins and the Lord pardons us. From a human way of thinking, we expect there to be some catch some terms and conditions. Can it really be that the Lord simply takes our sins away when we admit them to him? We are not used to this kind of generosity from those around us. Forgive and forget is something really rare in our fragile or broken relationships and interactions with others. And then we can project that human way of thinking and acting onto God's way of thinking and acting. Surely God doesn't just set us free from our sins without any preconditions? Surely there is some hard penance and price to pay for the gift of mercy? Shouldn't we have to prove to the Lord by some great act of remorse or by constantly beating ourselves up about our past sins, proving to him that we deserve to be forgiven? But we have to remember that if we could do something to deserve mercy, then it wouldn't actually be mercy. It is precisely because we cannot repair the damage 
bridge the gap or make sufficient restitution for the wrongs we have done, that the forgiveness we receive is mercy. We don't deserve mercy, but he, the Lord, desires to give us mercy. In the gospel today, Jesus says, if the Son makes you free, then you will be free indeed. In addition to St. Faustina's interaction with that elderly sister, I have also used that line from the lips of Jesus so, so many times with souls inside and outside of the sacrament of confession to seek to convince them that if they have come to this sacrament with enough faith to believe that there is hope for them of mercy, if they have had enough strength and courage in the Holy Spirit to fully confess some perhaps really dark deeds from their past, then surely they should have the same confidence and trust to hear these reassuring words from Jesus. If I, the Son of God, have set you free, then you are free indeed. And in that sacrament of reconciliation, Jesus really does break chains, wash souls, heal wounds, and restore to new life souls which may have been spiritually dead, maybe even for years and decades. And he does that not because we could ever prove ourselves reformed enough, repentant enough, good enough, but because to show mercy is a delight to him, to bestow pardon his greater desi greatest desire for us. As he said to St. Faustina, I am love and mercy itself. There is no misery that could be a match for my mercy. Neither will misery exhaust it. The flames of mercy are burning me, clamoring to be spent. I want to keep pouring them out upon souls. Souls just don't want to believe in my goodness. St. Faustina herself writes in her diary the following comment, which is her encouragement to us not to despair of God's forgiveness and not to doubt him when we have sought and received his forgiveness. Let no one doubt, she says, let no one doubt concerning the goodness of God. Even if a person's sin were as dark as night, God's mercy is stronger than our misery. One thing alone is necessary, that the sinner set ajar the door of his heart, be it ever so little, to let in a ray of God's merciful grace, and then God will do the rest. If the Son makes you free, then you are free indeed. Perhaps someone listen to, listening to me today is finding it hard to really accept that their past, even a really sinful past, has really been swallowed up by the Lord's decree of mercy. Perhaps the regret of that sin still stalks them or haunts them and steals from them the joy and peace which God's mercy gifted to them. To such a soul, I say, don't turn your attention to those past sins which afflict your heart and mind, even though you have already confessed them and received the Lord's absolution for them. The Lord has cast your sins to the bottom of the ocean, so don't be tempted to go fishing. He has annihilated them in the flames of his merciful love, so stop raking through the ashes. Rather, than obsess about those sins when they come to mind and allowing our focus on them to steal our peace. Turn rather to Jesus and speak to him. Say to him, yes, Lord, I did commit that terrible sin. I did indeed do it. But I praise you, Jesus, for when I brought it to you in confession, you have done away with it. You have washed me clean, unbound me from that sin, and you have set me free. I praise your mercy, Jesus, and I thank you from the deepest depths of my soul. If every time your, son, your sin comes 
to meet, beat you down in despondency. If every time that happens, you turn to Jesus in praise and thanksgiving, you will be glorifying that great attribute of God, his mercy, and you will not lose the joy and peace of salvation, which his mercy, which you have received, has planted into your soul. If the Son of God has set you free, then you are free indeed. St. Paul, in one of his letters, speaks about living the glorious liberty, the glorious freedom of the children of God. Jesus died on the cross. He shed his blood so that you might be free. So when you are set free by the Lord in confession, glory, glorify God, glory in it, rejoice in your salvation, rejoice that he has set you free and live the glorious liberty of a child of God.